good morning. It's about 3 a.m. and uh, we're still moving around. It's a lot of rolling, but it's pretty gentle. Um, the cat's had a harder time to this time getting settled in, but I think we're uh, on track now and they're both resting on their green cushion over there. Oh, looks like Blake's getting ready to get up. So we'll see how that goes. And um, yeah, time to do an engine room check. Uh, we're still on our course to get to the end of Kayak Island, which is still another 30 or so miles away, a few more hours, and then we should get there and then we'll be able to make another course adjustment. But for now, this is what we have. All right, it is about 6.20 a.m. and we are about eight miles from the St. Elias point, the end of Kayak Island. Um, hopefully you can see that there. The sun is making it a little more difficult to see. And uh, the waters are a little bit challenging. They're just moving around an awful lot. There's nothing harsh, but there's lots of highs and lows and a lot of moving around and hanging on. Um, there is a fish boat over there. Hopefully you'll be able to make him out. And then farther out that way, a container ship. So here's what's on the radar. Here's the fish boat pretty close to us. And there's the container ship and there's the point. And this is uh, 12 miles. So three, six, eight or so miles to the point. And the, con the fishing boat is within two miles. And here we are on the chart. Oh, shoot, sorry. Um, that's kind of a big one. And here we are on the chart. Here's the fish boat. This is our course. I moved us over a little bit. And the end of Kayak Island. So we're coming around there and then gonna turn towards shore after we round the island and uh, see how the water is. Hopefully it'll be a little calmer. There's some just big, you just gotta hang on. The provider is heading in. I think it does night fishing with lights and nets, but I don't know that for sure. Here's Barkley, not loving these seas, but making the most of it. And Jim's coming back from an engine room check. All good. <laughs> Barkley's making himself comfortable. As we cruise by the St. Elias buoy, it was so close we took the opportunity to use our Garmin inReach, contact our son Hayden, have him look up the National Data Buoy Center in real time and tell us the reports on the buoy as we passed by. The buoy was reporting 13.6 knots of wind gusting to 15.5. The wave height, as you see right here, 3.9 feet with an average period of 4.8 seconds. Now we know what four foot waves feel like and look like on video. Here's our chart. I hope you can see it. We started down here. Oops. 
We started down here and we are now here and we need to get up to here. So you can see we're just a little bit uh, more than halfway. And if you look outside, look how calm the water looks. It has really settled out. And uh, wow, this is the nicest it's been. But this is a lovely passage right now, this part of the passage. We're outside of Yakutat. It would have been a stopover if we needed it, but clearly we don't. And that's a great deal, so we can just keep on going. Inside, um, the cats are settling into uh, the bench here. And uh, we're just podcasting and keeping an eye on things. Jim's taking a nap. Kind of made a comfortable stop spot down there to take a nap. And uh, yeah, that's about all that's going on right now. Good evening, it is about 10 p.m. We're about 27 hours into our passage and uh, we're just outside of Yakutat and we have about 24, 26 hours to go. Um, so far so good, it, we've had some periods of higher wind, meaning 15 knots, not really heavy, um, that caused some kind of lumpy seas, but nothing remarkable, just kind of have to hang on, uh, but the wind's settled out now and the seas have flattened, so that's a good deal. These guys hide in the swells, but we just have to make sure to stay away from them. Good morning, it is about 7 a.m. on Friday morning, and um, we are about 120 miles from uh, getting done with the Gulf of Alaska, about 120 miles left in our uh, route. And uh, we are actually cruising along a little bit more slowly this morning. Let me show you where we are and what we're up to, and I'll explain why. All right, here's our chart, and we left Hitchinbrook down here. Oops, let's see if I can do this. Okay, here's our chart. We left Hitchinbrook here. We're just past Yakulta, uh, Yakutat, and we're working our way to Cross Sound. Uh, we have about 120 miles to go, um, about 7 a.m., and we think we'll have about a 2 p.m., 3 p.m. arrival time in uh, Cross Sound in southeast Alaska. Take a look at the water out the window. Is this amazing? The winds have settled out. It's only about five knots. And um, yeah, this is our seas. So much more comfortable, <laughs> certainly, and uh, really enjoying this water. Now, about for our fun time last night. I thought I'd settle in. So we we were cruising along last night about 1 a.m. when a huge thump hit the hull and shimmied the boat. So it is uh, not instrumentation. It was a really, we did hit something as we were going along. Um, we've got a bit of a shimmy now. We think it has to do with the uh, starboard strut, starboard uh, prop probably. I think the, the strut was probably gonna be fine, but at any rate, so we ended up slowing down. So instead of uh, doing about seven, a little over seven knots, we're down to six knots. And having slowed that down, uh, the vibration has ceased, um, uh, has lessened dramatically. So that is much better. Um, certainly we can cruise right along um, at this lower RPM, but we definitely need to get this checked out and looked at. So when we get to Southeast, we will probably head on to Wrangell and uh, take a look and see what's going on with our vessel and what we managed to do with it. But yeah, so a scare in the night, but not anything 
huge, but definitely something that just needs to be addressed. So we'll get that taken care of and let you know what we learn. There's, there's debris out here and it hides in these little swells. Um, some good sized trees, uh, big kelp beds, and we need to make sure to avoid those for the fairbanks, that kind of thing. So anyway, I spy another tree, but it's not in our course, so we're good. And uh, we'll just keep on going. We get there, we're almost there. We saw some orcas out here. We're deviating course a little bit because they were right in front of us. Let's see if they remake their appearance. Oh my goodness. 30 miles from shore and we find ourselves deviating course to avoid the orcas. Oh, Oh wow, that was scary. Continuing to move forward under pretty calm conditions, about as calm as you can ask for, I think. We're here. Goal is up here at Cape Spencer, 103 nautical miles, 15 hours to go. Doing six knots, a little bit of reduced speed because we have reduced RPM because as Rosie explained, we thumped something in the night, hit something, and I think it bounced off of one of the propellers, the starboard propeller, giving us a little vibration. We're gonna have to sort that out and wrangle when we get there. But that's okay, we're doing just fine. Hoping this calm holds for the next 16 hours, we'll see. in a tow. Good morning, everybody. It's our third night of the passage. We're uh, just in the process of getting ready to round Cape Spencer. Uh, it's 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Pitch black out now. So, you know, three days ago it was light all night. You didn't need the FLIR camera. You could see out in front of the boat in the dark. It's cloudy and gray but and it, now dark. Yeah, now dark. Uh, so I think that's the result of having, you know, moved 350 nautical miles south of where we were just a couple nights ago. It is our third night. Probably if you're gonna plan a passage like this, might be good not to be arriving around a big point that has lots of confused seas sometimes and marine traffic and all that, you know. Might pick a different time than the, you know, <laughs> four hours that it's dark. But no, we managed to hit the thing square in the middle. Yep. Just perfect. 
well. But uh, hey, you know, it's. Um, hey, the water's great. The water is great. The water yeah. conditions have been great. We've been, uh, we'll review that and kind of a recap, I think, down the road for you. But uh, feeling really good about having, you know, gone through the predict wind, picked our weather window, pulled the trigger, and did this by ourselves, this three night passage across the Gulf of Alaska. Something that we have more and more of an appreciation for why so few cruisers do it. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, yeah, so that part's coming to a conclusion. Doing good enough, I think if the daylight's gonna come up, we're actually not gonna stop at any available anchorages around the corner. I think we're gonna run about about 12 more hours uh, and stop uh, before dinner time where we want to. A place we were at uh, earlier in our uh, videos, of, uh, Pavlov. Uh, but uh, unlike when we were there before, you go a right now, there should be a lot of. Yeah. Right, right now, there should be a lot of bears there. So. Uh, we want to see some bears. Yep. So we want to go check that out. So. Were we steering around something? I think so. Okay. It's a little fuzzy to see, but. Yeah. I show you what you can see out the front, but it's Zippo zero. Hopefully and, uh, just for another hour or so, that'll get better. Yep. All right. Otherwise, cheers, prost with our coffees. One in the morning. Yeah. I'll give you a morning report later. When it's really morning. Good night. <laughs>